Now, uh, let's uh, just uh, get you uh, the very uh, latest that happened, in fact, uh, in uh, the parliament, uh, a complete breakdown of the relations between the government and the opposition that was on full display in the parliament on Thursday. 27 MPs have been suspended from the parliament till now and then a dramatic confrontation that took place between Sonia Gandhi and Smriti Nani over Congress leader Adi Ranjan Chaudhary's uh, remark of calling uh, the president Draupadi Murmu Rashtrapatni. The BJP called it a sexist insult while uh, you know this uh, was Adiranjan Chaudhary's uh, 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 you know he uh, said that it was just a slip of the tongue let's just look as to what really happened <laughs> Escalating bitterness between the government and the opposition now leading to unprecedented exchanges between the 75-year-old Congress President Sonia Gandhi and the minister who defeated her son Rahul Gandhi in Amethi, Smriti Irani, where slogans were chanted first against Sonia Gandhi and then matters got worse. At the center of it was the Congress leader in the Lok Sabha, Odiranjan Chaudhary, who in a TV interview called President Draupadi Murmu Rashtra Patni, a slip of the tongue is what he said. अचानक एक बात निकल चुकी है तो मैं क्या करूं एक बार निकल चुके हैं सिर्फ एक बार तो एक बार ये चूक हुई है बाय डिफॉल्ट आई थिंक इट इज नॉट अ स्लिप ऑफ द टंग इट वाज अ डेलीगेट बट स्मृति रानी एंड निर्मला सीतारामन अलोंग विद विमेन बीजेपी एमपीज लेड डिमांड्स इन बोथ हाउसेस फॉर सोनिया गांधी टू अपॉलोजाइज फॉर हिज रिमार्क्स व्हिच दे सेड डेनिग्रेटेड द प्रेसिडेंट एज अ वुमन एंड एज अ ट्राइबल Speaking to NDTV, Sonia Gandhi said that Odiranjan Chaudhary had already apologized for his remarks. He has already apologized. The situation deteriorated when Sonia Gandhi walked over to the BJP MP Rama Devi to convey Chaudhary's apology. Smriti Irani then rushed in when Sonia Gandhi told her, "Don't talk to me." So what exactly happened? Sonia Gandhi went across to the BJP's Rama Devi. The Congress says that Smriti Irani came, pointing a finger, saying. How dare you don't behave like this this is not your party office the bjp says that smriti rani came and said ma'am may i help you i had taken your name the congress says sonia gandhi responded i'm not speaking to you the bjp version sonia gandhi said don't talk to me the congress version smriti rani joined by bjp male mps in heckling mrs gandhi the bjp says mps from both sides came and slogan hearing started For Sonia Gandhi and Smriti Irani it's personal after the congress alleged that Smriti Irani's daughter used influence to get an illegal restaurant license and that Smriti Irani filed a legal case BJP male MPs also rushed in felt threatened that Shrimati Sonia Gandhi herself came up to probably one of our very senior members Rama Devi ji to find out and one of the member of our parliament our people members approached there and she said you don't talk to me as of putting her putting the member of parliament down in the house kya hua kya gandhi ji aapke paas chal kar aayi thi ye baat kehne ke liye par ye bhai aap kya karna chahte ho kya hua tha kyunki bahut kuch nahi hua wo puchi ke mera naam kyu bola jaan hum ka aapko pata nahi ki aap aap jisko neta bana kar rakhi ho kis tarah ka baat bola hai puche usse ja kar aur jab ismati ji aayi to unko kya hua fir aapas mein kya hua hua jab kahi kathi ki inko pata nahi hai ki kya kya bhul gaya hai aur raspati ko raspatni kaha ye nahi samajh mein aaya hai maafi mango desh se a traumatic and scary experience for sonia gandhi se congress and trinamool mps ne lok sabha ke andar bahut hi ek sharmanak vyavahar hamari neta sonia gandhi ji ke prati humne dekha I haven't heard her to the best of my knowledge. I did uh Sonia ji did tell me uh that she had gone to speak to uh Rama Devi ji and when I went Sonia ji wasn't talking to anybody. I requested her and we both with a few of many of my other uh, women colleagues were there Gaurav Gogoi was there a whole lot was there some from the I mean both sides there were a lot of MPs emotions were very very high and I think uh, we just left it. This on a day the upper house suspended three more opposition MPs taking the number of suspended members in both houses to 27 Amid the high wall drama in parliament on Thursday sources say 
both government and opposition parties have agreed for a discussion on price rise issue on Monday in Lok Sabha and on Tuesday in Raj Sabha. With camera person Ashwini Mehra, this is Aravind Gunaseka for NDTV. And Mahua Moitra put out a tweet saying, I remember orchestrated a show of condemnation by the chair when I had rightly made fuss about being cut off before time. After yesterday's jungle raj on floor of the house, I'm eagerly awaiting similar censor for BJP by the chair. Wink wink is what the Mohima Mutra put out in a tweet. Now, meanwhile, the suspended MPs will continue their protests at the Mahatma Gandhi statue in Parliament. And that's going to take place till about 5 o'clock. Remember, that was that 50-hour protest. They're protesting against price strike and various other issues of, as well as 27 MPs who have been suspended. And that is why they have been uh, protesting since Wednesday. Congress MPs are likely to meet with the Lok Sabha Speaker to express their displeasure with the BJP MPs and Council of Ministers who were present during the confrontation with Sonia Gandhi. Congress leader Ajay Ranjan Chaudhary sought time with the President, that's Draupadi Murmu, in order to apologize for his Rashtrapatni comment. So we have uh, my colleague uh, Sunil Prabhu joining us. Uh, Sunil, that relay protest by the opposition MPs in the parliament that's going on since Wednesday and that's expected to end at about 5 o'clock. Uh, when is the opposition going to be talking and discussing that price rise uh, debate? When is that expected next week? Well, uh, those dates uh, are, uh, uh, as, as has been pointed out uh, early uh, Monday and Tuesday, uh, it's slated for discussion. Finally, because I think uh, that is something which has been the standoff and that's the only way uh, you can take it uh, forward. Uh, the fact that you suspended the highest number of m m MPs from uh, the Rajya Sabha, uh, it's a record of sorts, uh, is clearly an indication that there all is not well between the opposition uh, as well as the government uh, in terms of how they want to take forward. Uh, yesterday we saw those unfortunate scenes where members of parliament, in particular from the ruling party, uh, disrupting their own uh, business. So it's, uh, it's, it's, an, it's a new trend. It's a trend that is going to continue uh, in the days to come. And as uh, you pointed out, Mawa Maitra uh, uh, herself uh, uh, making it uh, a point to remind uh, the speaker, uh, who's now known as the suspension speaker, of what exactly is his role. What will he do today? Will he condemn the behavior that has taken place, the switching of mics, uh, which he got all parties to do last time round? What will be his role? Uh, that's the critical question. That's the, uh, because uh, as Mr. Adir Ranjan Chaudhary has pointed out, as a leader of the Congress party and the largest opposition party, he is not being permitted to speak on the floor of the House. Uh, if that is the trend, uh, what exactly is Parliament meant for? Uh, these are questions which the presiding officer of this country has to answer. Uh, he's, after all, uh, above, uh, because of the legislature and the parliament being supreme, uh, there is no questions uh, that can be asked on the speaker. But this is a question that members of parliament are now questioning him um, publicly on social media and for which uh, there will have to be certain answers even if you try to brush it away. Right, uh, that uh, dharna, that sit-in protest that's uh, been going on uh, from uh, Wednesday. How are the MPs doing? Of course, their demand is to revoke that suspension of the 27 MPs. Uh, but, uh, uh, well, uh, the run-up, uh, that uh, protest that actually ends at 5 p.m. today. So it's against uh, much odds, you know, the fact that they continue for that 50-hour relay. It's, it's been difficult. If you've seen those visuals of a member of parliament putting a mosquito net because uh, this is monsoon season in Delhi and uh, parliament is no exception from mosquitoes uh, and uh, they've been bitten. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's a tough job. Uh, please uh, remember those uh, uh, nearly 24 members of parliament uh, to protest uh, through the night at uh, uh, Parliament, uh, which is, uh, you know, cordoned off. Uh, they don't permit you to even uh, report uh, about uh, those incidents that are taking place. And it's in that backdrop uh, that uh, this uh, continues. So definitely hats off to them. And today it will end, uh, which will clearly set uh, the precedent. But what happens to the other four members of Parliament uh, who have been suspended for the entire session uh, in the Lok Sabha? That's going to be uh, the next uh, uh, bone of contention. And we'll have to wait and see how things uh, resolve, uh, but definitely, uh, as you saw yesterday, the attempt was to shift the headlines, the attempt was to change uh, the narrative uh, to ensure uh, that it doesn't focus on price rise and uh, suspension of MPs uh, and get into a new issue, uh, right. which as uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Adi Ranjan Chaudhary himself said, uh, was a slip of a tongue. He apologized and is saying, uh, I will go to the President and apologize to her. 
Right, uh, and that's expected as well. Uh, well, uh, of course, uh, like you did point out, uh, the mosquito issue as far as they've been uh, braving out, uh, the heat as well as the rain, uh, Sunil, uh, as far as those MPs who are sitting in protest, uh, let's just hope uh, that uh, it doesn't rain today as far as uh, the areas in uh, New Delhi is concerned. Here is Derek O'Brien also putting out a tweet saying, uh, it's uh, one in the morning and uh, a picture from the Dharna site is what he put out saying, non-stop day and night. 50 hours, dharna still going on, 12 hours to go, revoke the suspension of 27 MPs who were suspended for seeking a discussion on price rise. Now that is up for discussion, uh, is what uh, now the government is saying. And like Sunil was pointing out, uh, those matters will come up in the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha on Monday as well as on Tuesday. With that, we're still a short break. Lots more coming up on this. Welcome back. Now, let's get you the biggest cash haul from any political scam by the Enforcement Directorate. 50 crores and counting seized from the home of Arpita Mukherjee, the aide of Bengal Minister Partha uh, uh, Chatterjee, who has now been sacked. Mamta Banerjee removed Partha Chatterjee as a minister from all his party posts in the Trinamool Congress five days after he was arrested for alleged corruption in the recruitment of teachers. प्रधानमंत्री नवेम्बर नोटबंदी घोषणा गोवार सभा तीन दिन पर घनीष्ठ आक्रमण करते प्रधानमंत्री and with that, we're sitting in a very short break. On the other side, we'll get you freak weather conditions across the globe. In fact, in the UAE, it's been flooding. We'll get you that and a whole lot more on the other side. Welcome back. Now for the very first time, the world's biggest chess event is happening in India. Chennai is hosting the 44th Chess Olympiad and the Prime Minister declared it open, saying the tournament has come to the house of chess. But there was a controversy as well. The Pakistan team pulled out at the last minute, leaving Chennai. India accused it of politicising a sporting event. But let's just listen in to what the Tamil Nadu's Chief Minister and also Prime Minister Modi had to say. is beautiful because it has inherent power to unite. Sport brings people and societies closer. Sport nurtures a spirit of timber. There has never been a better time for sports in India than the present. Out of 73 grandmasters in India, 26 are from Tamil Nadu. It means 36% of Indian grandmasters are from Tamil Nadu. This is a game of intelligence and strategy. And I am proud 
that Tamil Nadu excels in this game. Chennai can be rightly called the chess capital of India. Now to get more on this, we have my colleague Sam Daniel uh, joining us. Uh, Sam, what time are the events planned for? Wh when does it all kick start? Divya, today will be the day one for the games and it begins at 3 o'clock. It's between 3 and 8 every day. And uh, around 2,000 international players from 186 countries are now participating. Each country has set, sent the best player. And this is the largest ever Olympiad. In fact, this number, they say... The Olympiad has never seen this kind of a participation and uh, big players like the World Chess Champion Carlson would also be participating. Indian five-time World Chess Champion Vishwanathan Anand is not participating. He will be taking the role of a mentor for the Indian team. And prospects for the Indian team, many say, look brighter with the reigning champion China not participating. Although in terms of ranking, the Team B of Indian team ranks number two. And many hope this kind of a huge event uh, in India would promote chess in India in a big way and the chess federation says that the hope is in the next four years every family would at least have one chess player that's what they're aiming at and they compare this to the 1983 World Cup win cricket World Cup win by India which was a kind of a turning point for in for cricket in India like that they look at this event as a turning point for chess in India Divya. Right, thank you so much, Sam, for joining us with those details. Moving on, uh, well, uh, now time to get you some international news. Uh, flooding struck areas in the United Arab Emirates as the country was hit by heavy rain. Some stranded people who became trapped in their homes in cities of uh, Sharjah as well as Fujairah were rescued by the members of the civil defence. Fujairah being uh, badly affected as uh, it is an area surrounded by mountains as well as uh, valleys and Sharjah was also badly affected while Dubai and Abu Dhabi saw less rain. Authorities issued warnings to the residents to stay indoors and keep away from areas prone to flash flooding like valleys. They also announced temporary shelter would be provided at hotels for those who had to leave their homes. The unsettled weather which hit the country uh, is expected uh, in fact uh, now to carry on over the next 24 hours. Ukrainian president made his uh, usual address and uh, this time marking the first day of the Ukrainian statehood. Let's listen in to the president. Сьогодні ми вперше відзначили день української державності. Я був щасливий побачити, скільки людей сприйняли це свято близько до серця і вітали з ним, і посміхались, і пишались Україною. Здається, ми мали відзначати такий день багато-багато років. Настільки він логічний, але установили це свято лише минулого року. І що ж, тепер назавжди. A state of emergency has been declared in San Francisco due to the growing number of monkeypox cases allowing officials to cut through the red tape and fight a public health crisis uh, reminiscent of the AIDS epidemic that began devastating the city in 1980s. The declaration, which takes effect Monday, was welcomed by gay advocates who have grown increasingly frustrated by what they call San Francisco's lackluster response to a virus that so far has affected more men who have had sex with men, although anyone can get infected. The city has 261 cases out of about 800 cases that have been reported in California. In the United States, 4,600 cases have been noted so far. And in Argentina, social movement and leftists were grouped took to the streets of Buenos Aires, uh, demanding uh, more state aid and a universal basic income for workers and rising inflation. Holding banners with slogans, uh, IMF out, and also for work and salary against hunger and poverty, thousands of demonstrators gathered at various venues and converged at the iconic uh, Plaza Square. The uh, massive uh, protest took place in the midst of a deepening economic crisis across Argentina. And with that, we're sitting in a very short break. Lots more coming up on the other side.
Welcome back. Now a quarter of a ton of fireworks, two hours of symbolism and an enormous metal bull were all packed into the grand opening of the Birmingham Commonwealth Games. 72 cars from across five decades uh, formed a tribute to Birmingham's incredible and storied uh, motor industry history before athletes from 72 nations grabbed the headlines. The loudest cheer was reserved for India. It wasn't as colourful as Gold Coast or as grand as Delhi, but Birmingham lived up to its billing. Birmingham showcased itself as a youthful, vibrant city, as well as a region that has a lot of history. The sporting extravaganza, the Commonwealth Games, started with African Saqqara drum rolls, and then it was time to showcase the history of the region through the cars that were made, that used to be made in Midlands, a few years ago, until a few years ago, they were all wheeled into the stadium in the form of a union, of an union jack and um, Prince Charles came out of one of them impersonating James Bond. Uh, there were great recreations of William Shakespeare, Edward Elgar and Samuel Jackson. It was uh, all about celebrating the power of books and education. Malala Yousafzai was also brought in um, by the organizers, the adopted daughter of Birmingham, who spoke uh, how every child needs to be given the power to reach their full potential and pursue their wildest dreams. Birmingham, the beating heart of industrial revolution, also showcased itself in the way it has been a part of the industrial revolution in Britain. And then it was the time for the athletes to come out. Australia led the way, followed by 12 countries of Pacific, then there were the Africans in all their colour and glory, followed by countries of uh, America. The Asians were the last to come out. India had the largest cheer reserved uh, for them. Uh, the, the squad was led out by PV Sindhu and Manpreet Singh and when they came out, um, the, the, crowds, uh, the, the crowd inside the stadium stood up. There were about uh, 22,000 spectators inside the stadium, many, many of whom were of uh, um, Indian and Pakistani descent. And uh, when India came out, everyone started celebrating. There was music, there was cheering, there was songs, there was, there was dance. And um, it seemed that the Indian contingent also was out and they were energetic enough to perform in the middle. The closing act provided by Duran Duran and once that was done, it was time for the games to begin. And uh, Rika also spoke with Indian uh, squash player Anhat uh, Singh, also the youngest Indian at the Commonwealth Games. Let's just listen in. India will be represented by 214 athletes at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham and you are looking at the youngest athlete in the Indian contingent, Anhat Singh. She will be playing squash at the games here, her first Commonwealth Games. Uh, Anhat, thank you very much for joining us. Tell us, talk to us a little bit about the excitement. You are the junior India number one, but this perhaps is your first biggest senior tournament. Uh, it's really different, but also like, really exciting because I get to play with senior players from all the different sports and like get to see them around like if I meet them in the dining hall or just walking around take pictures with them talk to them so I feel like it's a totally different experience which I've been looking forward to like throughout since I started playing. Tell us uh, about this you know graduation from junior to suddenly becoming a senior overnight you were you know thrown into the big league. Uh, it is a bit overwhelming because I feel like suddenly like in a matter of like a few months I jumped from juniors to seniors but like I said I'm really excited because I feel like you only get to play seniors after a certain age and me getting to do that at a younger age and like not many people have the option to do that so I feel like that's I'm really happy about that. And you're essentially a singles player Anath but you're also playing doubles here with Sunaina, how has that been going and how has it been 
uh, switching from singles to doubles? Uh, I feel like it's quite similar except we're just two people and just helping you out a bit more but we've practiced quite a bit over the past one month and I feel like we can do quite well. You know, um, a lot of people I've been talking to uh, says that she has tremendous power and her foot movement agility is what sets her apart. Um, would you say that is something that uh, will help you get closer to a medal? Because you're better than the other athletes in that. Uh, I feel like movement definitely is um, like better because I used to play badminton and yeah. that helped out a lot in my movement. But I feel like there are quite a few aspects, like power, I don't exactly have like the same amount of power that other athletes have, so there are quite a few things missing out, but I feel like I can be a close contender. And, and why did you decide to shift from uh, badminton to squash? Because squash is a more intense and a more difficult sport than badminton. Uh, I feel like squash just, you know, fit me better. I tried okay. playing a lot of different sports. Like, I was always into sports. Like, in school, outside school, I used to play sports, like, all the time. But I feel like squash is actually the sport that I had the most fun with. And I mm -hmm. felt like I'd do best at. Tell us uh, about little tips that you may be getting from your senior pros like Joshna and Deepika. They have been in the circuit for over a decade now. Um, one thing that I don't exactly do is like warming up and cooling down. So I feel like they, that's what they've been telling me throughout the whole tournament that I need to start doing that to like in the like when I'm like playing senior categories. So that's one thing I've been like told constantly. You are a class nine student at the British school. How has it been adjusting, um, you know, professional sports with your studies? Um, the teachers are very supportive, like I'm going to miss the first 20 days of school for the Commonwealth and like after this World Juniors, but the teachers have all emailed and messaged and like made sure that I'm doing fine and they'll help me catch up and make sure I understand everything. And what about your classmates? Are, you, are they excited that you know you're a part of such a mega event? Yeah, my classmates, they're all like messaging me and like calling me and stuff and like wishing me best of luck and I feel like that's really sweet of them to do that. You know, one question that everyone, an answer that everyone perhaps would like to know, it's such a big event, it's a massive stage. All the mega athletes say that they have butterflies in stomach. But would you say because you're so young and uninhibited, those butterflies aren't there? Uh, yeah, because I feel like I don't really have anything to lose here. So even if I'm not able to play my best, it's fine because it's my first senior tournament and I'm going to like try and do better like the next tournaments. But I'm going to try my best, of course. Realistically, what are the targets you're setting for yourself here? Um, realistically, I'm going to try and at least according to the draw I've gotten, I feel like my coaches are saying I can try and reach the quarters and semis if I mm -hmm. play my game. That's in the singles? Uh, yeah. And what about the doubles? Doubles, I haven't really thought of that yet because it's like next week is not starting. Right now I'm focusing on singles. One last question, Anath. You are also supported by the Virat Kohli Foundation, I believe. To what extent does the foundation support you and um, where do they expect to reach you in the next couple of years? Um, they're really supportive. They like help out in all the traveling and like coaching and for the past like one year I've been with them and I feel like I don't think anyone really expects that much because like I said, it's my first Commonwealth but I mean, I'm going to try and do my best and like make people proud well that's what we are all hoping for and wishing you very best of luck you are looking at the next big thing in indian sports anhat singh and she's not only going to make india proud this time by appearing in her first commonwealth games but also one for the future we are talking about shooting at the commonwealth games and it'll be a big big miss for india that the shooters are not here given that it is a sport that has given India the maximum number of medal at any multidisciplinary event. To talk about shooting and its absence, we have the shooting legend with us, London Olympics medalist Gagan Narang. Gagan, you have 10 medals from the um, Commonwealth Games, not to speak about your Olympic medal here, but overall India has won over 60 gold medals in shooting how big a miss it will be for the Indian contingent to not have you guys here. 
Well, Rika, it will be a big miss. In fact, uh, I am missing them as well. And it's quite uh, odd that I am sitting here and giving you an interview rather than giving you an interview in Birmingham. I think the shooters are a bit disappointed that Conwell Games may shooting nahi hoga. I think uh, it's a big blow, but uh, hopefully the good sense will prevail and we should be back in the Commonwealth fold in the next edition. Now, Gagan, in 2019, when this decision came through that there will be no shooting, the Indian Olympic Association had even threatened a boycott as a bargain. They were told that a Commonwealth shooting championship and perhaps an archery championship will be held, but that has not happened. Do you think that could be a reality? Well, I don't know why that didn't see the light of the day, but I think it was because of COVID. But uh, I'm hoping that, you know, shooting at the moment does not figure in the first list of the 2026 uh, Commonwealth Games in Australia. But I'm hoping that good sense will prevail and shooting will come back into its fold. Because if you see, it's not just about uh, Indians winning medals. I think the Australians are also traditionally very good at the sport. And uh, shooting not being there will also cause a dent in their medal tally. So I'm hoping that shooting will be included. Uh, Gagan, we were talking to the Commonwealth Games Federation this morning and they uh, they were saying that a review comes up uh, in a few months' time and by September probably we will get to know the final list of uh, the sport that are going to be played at the Commonwealth Games. But given how things have gone, how hopeful are you of you know shooting, wrestling and uh, a few other sports being a part of these multidisciplinary events in the long run? Well, Rika, speaking uh, factually, I think uh, uh, traditionally, you know, we've been doing better in these games and I am not, I don't see a reason. I mean, it's a bit unfair uh, because there's so many young athletes uh, participating across uh, uh, various Commonwealth Games uh, nations that uh, that they are being unfair to. And I think, uh, I hope that no games are uh, excluded and in fact, uh, they should include as many games as possible so that the the Olympic movement, the spirit of sport is alive and it continues to grow that way. Gagan, the idea that I have uh, in having spoken to these officials is that they're trying to compete with Olympics to get younger. And while they're trying to get younger athletes and younger audience, the sense I get is that uh, they're perhaps more trying to get in more urban young audience and urban young athlete than, you know, trying to be in- inclusive. What is your idea? You know, Exclusive, excluding events like uh, wrestling and archery, as well as shooting and bringing in, you know, sports like skateboarding, um, break dancing, rock climbing. Doesn't it appeal to the urban ad- audience more than, you know, uh, the audience and well, at mass? I guess it's beyond my imagination to kind of uh, see these new sports being uh, included and at the same time the traditional sports being excluded. I think that should not have happened. I'm not against new sports being included, but the traditional sport, I mean, if you see wrestling, it's been there since the longest and it's mm-hmm. never gone out any of any games for that matter. So why should a sport like shooting? I mean, archery, of course, developed into shooting and so on. But I think I don't see a reason that these sports should be excluded and the sport should be included in on their uh, in their behalf. So I think you have enough space for... Uh, uh, including more sports and just don't take any sport out because it's unfair to so many millions of people who are training for this sport. Now, Gagan, you have been a champion shooter at the Commonwealth Games. Uh, tell us, you know, there's been a lot of talk about the relevance of the Commonwealth Games. What do you think are the relevance of it uh, today? Well, I feel uh, India's best medal hall at the Commonwealth Games in shooting especially was uh, in 2002, Manchester and we had 69 medals and we finished fourth, you know, and uh, we've been since independence only missed three Commonwealth Games out of so many that have been happen- happening and uh, we finished second in 2010. So I think Commonwealth Games is a great uh, first step for any athlete. For, I mean, it should be their first games. Of course, my first games were the Olympic Games because I was in that part of the Olympic cycle. But it's a great uh, first step to kind of understand what the games are all about, the whole uh, media attention around the games, the whole feeling of having so many sports together, eating together and, you know, traveling. So I think the whole games environment is very, very good during the Commonwealth Games. It's a great step up to go and lead up to the Asian Games and then to the Olympics. It's a great games environment. It gives you the confidence and it also makes you believe if you win, it also makes you believe that you're up there and ready to win at the big stage. 
Gagan, since you look at sports globally, let me ask you this question. Would you say also the relevance lies in the kind of money, in the kind of uh, cash that uh, the athletes win after every Commonwealth uh, medals they get? And it's almost at par with winning the Olympics. Well, no, there is a differentiation between the cash awards, but of course, uh, some are more than the others. But I think in the ranking, you have the Commonwealth Games and the Asian Games and then the Olympics. So there is a, a clear demarcation between the three games because the whole world doesn't participate. There's only the Commonwealth countries and then there's only the Asian countries. And the Olympics, then you face the whole world. And then that's the actual test of who's in which, which level of water. I would. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, since I have got you ahead of the games, let me ask you, let me pin you down to uh, a realistic number of medals that we can get from these medals, from these games. Well, uh, that would not be a great criteria of judging India's performance because uh, shooting as a sport is uh, not included. So it will be a big dent in the total number of medals. But I think a good success parameter for the Indian yeah. team for the Commonwealth Games would be to better their performances sport-wise. So if you would take each sport, for example, we have uh, bench strength in wrestling, weightlifting, badminton, boxing, table tennis, hockey, athletics, cricket. So if they're able to kind of improve their medal tally or the color of the medal in these individual sports, I think that is a good success parameter for the Indians at the Commonwealth Games. Thank you very much, Gagan, for joining us. And we will keep a track of the games and we'll keep listening to you as the games progress. Thank you and all the best.